welcome back i am kalyan reddy daida and i will be your instructor in this eks kubernetes master class course so let's see the course outline on a high level so this outline is, is also going to be very detailed because the course is also a very longer course which hits close to 20 hours and outline also we need to understand in detail before going in so we'll see what all concepts we are going to cover as part of this course so we have divided the topics into four major sections so which is kubernetes concepts aws services integration with eks means like what all aws services we can use in relation with elastic kubernetes service of aws and devops concepts and then microservices concepts so let's see what all covered under uh, kubernetes concepts so close to 30 kubernetes concepts are covered as part of this entire course and whenever we are writing these uh, concepts related yaml declarative files we are going to do a live template writing sections wherever it is required so in addition to that covering all these kubernetes concepts we also cover integration with close to 18 or 19 aws services uh, in relation with eks which is elastic kubernetes service for example you can see here so this is eks and then we'll have fargate we'll have certificate manager we'll have route 53 we'll have elastic block store and rds database and then elastic load balancing with uh, classic load balancer network load balancer and uh, application load balancer with ingress service so like this all whatever the possibility is there which are in integration with eks we have tried to get them under this course and next thing is devops right so from devops perspective using aws code services we have implemented a devops pipeline to understand in better for both the applications and also the kubernetes manifest so which means like if you make any change to your kubernetes manifest and then check in that code that will get deployed to your kubernetes cluster if you make any changes to your application and then check in your application code so it will build a new docker image and then deploy to the kubernetes cluster so both ways the pipeline is built for you and next is microservices so from microservices perspective the core concepts in relation with kubernetes will be service discovery distributed tracing and then canary deployments so those also we have looked into before moving on to bigger things in kubernetes so we are going to learn both docker and then kubernetes fundamentals in the fundamentals section so there will be a dedicated docker fundamentals section available for us so where we build a simple docker image push it to docker hub and then even pull from docker hub and then understand that docker terminology like uh, what is docker registry what is docker hub what is docker image what is container so we'll understand all those things in the docker fundamentals section and then we'll move on to kubernetes fundamentals section wherein we will primarily focus on implementing kubernetes concepts using imperative way and then declarative way so here we do lot of live template writing in the declarative way and then lot of kubernetes kubectl commands in the imperative section and then get a full idea about the kubernetes from pods replica sets deployments and then services perspective and from there we'll jump on to big course so we will start with in this course with the eks storage with ebs csi driver which is elastic block store and then we will implement and then learn as part of that we'll learn how to write a deployment how to write a mysql cluster ip service or how to write a node port service and uh, environmental variables how you are going to define and volumes volume mounts everything whatever is related to this respective section you will do a live template writing here and then understand all these concepts and then provision these things from your kubernetes manifest so and then you will understand about what are the drawbacks of using ebs csi driver and what are the advantages you are going to get using rds database and then later using external name service you are going to implement it with rds database so now you have completed the database part with the storage section of storage classes persistent volume claim config maps all those things so then you will move on to load balancer section 
right so before moving on to load balances section whatever you have implemented its equal and network diagram looks this way so now anyway we know that load balances need to run on public subnets and then our workloads need to run on private subnets so to do so what you are going to do immediately you are going to delete this respective worker nodes here and then move your workloads to your private subnets so you are going to do this and then ensure that you create a classic load balancer in your public subnet and then access it so now you have implemented your classic load balancer related manifest also in addition to your this whole manifest whatever you have built earlier and then you will move on to also creating a network load balancer manifest and then testing it so now you have used classic and then network load balancer so now you will move on to the ingress service which is super advanced and then with uh, tons of features inside that so with the ingress service you are going to implement context path based routing using means like with three applications you are going to deploy and then you will implement the context path based routing with slash app one should go to app one app two should go to app two and then anything other than that should go to user management microservice in addition to that in the same ingress service you will implement ssl so you will enable the ssl for your application here okay and then you will also implement http to https redirection using ssl redirect and finally in ingress load balancer alb ingress load balancer you are also going to implement external dns so external dns what it does is automatically from the kubernetes manifest you are going to register your domain name in the route 53 service so that also you are going to do so all these things once completed means like the we have completed the database part we have completed the deployments part and we have completed the load balancer part so then what comes next right so how to run these in fargate serverless so we'll move on to that section okay so in fargate serverless what we do is like uh, we will run our workloads in a mixed mode in such a way that we will run few workloads on our regular managed node groups with ec2 instances and then we will also run our kubernetes pods on fargate so we are going to implement this with again three applications app1 app2 and then ums in a mixed mode deployment so wherein app1 is running on the eks managed node groups and ums and then app2 is running on eks fargate profiles so this one also we are going to look into in detail and then once we complete the fargate so we'll move on to understanding about elastic container registry so in relation with eks elastic kubernetes service so for that purpose what we do is like we'll move on with creating a new docker image and then push it to the elastic container registry and then use that docker image in our kubernetes cluster by deploying the workloads so that one we are going to test and as usual we'll continue with our ingress load balancer for all these sections also anyway we have implemented earlier here so in our application load balancer section so we'll continue to use that ingress load balancer in all the upcoming demos for getting complete hands-on on that respective section two then we'll move on to the devops section and understand the release processes source build test and then production and we'll also understand about continuous integration continuous delivery continuous deployment and then infrastructure as code concepts and then move on to understand about how we are going to implement the devops concepts in aws in relation with elastic kubernetes service so we'll understand about code commit check in the sample code here and uh, we'll do the code build means like we'll generate the artifacts and then we'll deploy them to our respective eks cluster using kubectl and code build combination and then we are going to monitor our applications using cloudwatch container insights so we are also going to implement this devops use case right and then we'll move on to the microservices section with two independent microservices built exclusively for testing microservices service discovery and then microservices distributed tracing and then microservices canary deployments so we are going to 
use these two services user management microservice and then notification microservice and then implement the full use case okay so whenever you as a developer when you use postman client and create a user it will call the notification api and then send an email to end user so these two microservices using service discovery how you are going to deploy to aws eks and then this is the way we are going to deploy. So here we'll have UMS node port service, MySQL external name service, notification cluster IP service. So entire service discovery, how you are going to handle it in, in relation with EKS, you are going to implement end to end. And then you will move on to the next section of uh, distributed tracing. So for distributed tracing, you need to deploy your daemon sets with X-ray pods. So using Kubernetes daemon sets concept, you are going to deploy the X-ray pods and this user management microservice application and then notification microservice application what we have done here is like so we have implemented x-ray using x-ray sdk in those things so when you deploy those applications so how the x-ray is going to behave and then what happens so using distributed tracing we are going to see in detail so whenever distributed tracing is enabled you can see the service map such a way that the request from client comes to user management microservice and then calls the notification microservice. So everything you are going to see in detail. From there, you will move on to traces also. In X-ray traces, if you see here, so the request came to user management microservice and inside that application, it went to get notification app info method. And from there, it went to Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes service notification cluster IP service and from there again it called the v1 notification microservice which in turn called the means like inside that notification app version service method was called. So these traces also we are going to look into in detail as part of this section. And then finally for microservices we are also going to do the canary deployments right so whenever we call the user management microservice there will be two versions of notification service will be live and the traffic will be distributed based on how much we configure 50 50 or 75 25 like that so it is going to do the traffic distribution to v1 notification and then v2 notification microservices and using kubernetes out of the box uh, features whatever is available with the pod number changing we are going to implement this canary deployments so from there we will move on to horizontal pod autoscaler vertical pod autoscaler and also cluster autoscaler so all the hpa vpa and then ca concepts we will implement in detail and then we will move on to the container insights concepts which is nothing but kubernetes monitoring and then logging section so we are going to use cloudwatch agent daemon set in our kubernetes cluster to get the metrics of all our kubernetes cluster and then applications deployed inside that in addition to that we are also going to deploy fluentd daemon set which will get the application logs and then kubernetes cluster logs for us inside the cloudwatch so as a developer you are going to see what, what, uh, container map and then container resources performance dashboards log groups log insights and then alarms so you are going to implement all these things in a detailed manner you will you will implement alarms you will understand about log insights and then from log insights you are going to create the dashboards so all these things you are going to do as part of container insights so this is a quick view about the container insights map so in eks demo cluster you can see that in amazon cloudwatch namespace you can see fluentd and then cloudwatch agent pod is running in kube system namespace you can see kube dns aws node and then kube proxy related pods are running and in default namespace whatever the application you have deployed so those are running sample nginx service sample nginx deployment related pod so all those things are running so all in all we are going to do all these things as part of this course so in our next lecture we are going to see our github repo and then understand how to move on with this course so I'll see you in the next lecture. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you.